Aggies puppies. Now approaching four weeks old. Sorry to get somewhat more adventurous. They hear me talking, look at them, they're like, wait, what's going on? Somebody, what? Did I startle you? I rolled back in my chair. I'm not used to that sound so much. Oh, here's one here coming out. Would you happy puppy? Hi, girl. Hi, girl. Yeah. This a sweet little pink girl. You guys gonna wake up? Oh, there goes the little boy. I think anyhow. Better we use some of these color ribbons. I get more familiar when they get about five to six weeks old. Start memorizing all their names. Um, so, pink would be Alexis. That red one walking around is Eldo. Here's another little girl with the purple ribbon, Albie. I know this little boy back there is watching me. The white one, the white boy, Albert. Got the navy ribbon on. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Aldo. Hi. Sniffing around. You want to see what's going on, don't you? Little Alexa. You too? You're thinking about it. Albie. Oh, yeah. What, you hear that? Look at that little girl. Amelia. So pretty. Amelia. My sleepy ones, the green ribbons, Ashley, and the aqua blue is Apton with the curly hair coat. Sleepy little one with the orange ribbon is uh, Alcott. like high-pitched voices so even though I may sound like a fool they uh, respond better it's like baby talk baby talk works for puppies too you're the big boy but we're gonna put you out there so we oh you know a little wagging tail oh you happy little boy oh you happy little boy oh here's a little girl too back to my feet oh yeah they cold little noses on my leg with your toys. I know. Is it time to change that ribbon? It looks a little tight on you, huh? Let's see how tight that are. No, you're still fine. I'm still fine. We have beautiful shaggy fluffy coats. Absolutely no shedding. Hypoallergenic. And that's not a guess here. We DNA test the parent dogs. So as long as they're getting the furnishing jeans, long hair, the curly jeans, all those, all those jeans have to line up right. And then uh, even if they're missing one of those jeans, if the other parent is totally 100% on the FFCC, the IC in the jeans in there, Get all these genes in order, and then you can mate your dogs so that all of them are hypoallergenic and non shedding. So it's not necessarily, oh, I got to go with an F1B curly puppy because they say those are the most hypoallergenic, non shedding. Well, F1B, if you're guessing and you're not doing the DNA testing, you can maybe be 70% correct on an F1B litter that they're going to turn out that way. Um, poodles are the the ones that are carrying like the F, F for the furnishing jeans and the curl. But some of these poodles, when they were downsized, well, they all started out probably like 50 pound average, standard poodle or even bigger. And somehow they got downsized and downsized over the years to make these little tiny ones. Well, somebody had mixed in other dog genes somewhere way back, you know, in the ancestries and not all poodles can be 100% guaranteed to be hypoallergenic and non-shedding due to that fact. So even a poodle needs to be DNA tested for coat types. So 
of which we also DNA test for uh, all the various, you know, I don't even know, 30 different diseases dogs can get. So we DNA test for all that as well. Because even if you have a carrier in the DNA test, so they carry the gene, they don't have it. Now, if you mate them to a dog that does not have it, then you're still safe. So it's not like you have to throw out every dog that comes along and has a carrier, even though they're not affected with the gene. You just need to be aware of who you're mating that dog with. Yeah, so 18 years ago when I started breeding, it was all about the OFA testing. You had to get your hips done, your cardiac, your patella, which we still do because that is very important. You need your bone structure, cardiac, kneecaps, all that. Uh, but, uh, you know, DNA testing's come a long way in the last 18 years. I think whenever I first started DNA testing, there were only like five genes they were testing for. PRA was like the biggest one out there, and your your Von Wildenbrand was supposedly a big poodle thing, which I've never ever seen in a poodle or a golden doodle. Um, not even a carrier gene, so I almost think that one's been weeded out of the poodles. Yeah, but now they're testing for you know every known disease out there and you can actually all bundle it in one test where before we were having breeders would have to go to this lab for pra testing another lab for the coat testing another lab for such and such so it was very costly in the beginning and now with uh now they kind of all bundle them together for a couple hundred dollars you can get every single dna disease out there panel tested so no excuse for any breeder not the DNA test. So just a little educational while we're watching the puppies. So and I and uh, I know I think I bumped up the weight a little bit on the website of these dogs because I've been hearing that uh Easy Rizzo, some of his puppies, a couple of them, I mean, some say small, but some are reaching 28, 32 pounds. Um, Easy Rizzo's been breeding here for two years, so we're first getting some history on him. Uh, people love his personality, the coat types, but it's just the weight's getting a little bigger. And uh, that's due to the fact, no, he's only been here for two years, so I don't really have that historical factors behind him where I do on Chewbacca because Chewbacca's turned 10 last May. He's been here since he was a year old. So uh, I have so much history behind him and I know especially the girls are staying probably you know 15 to 22, 23 pounds and then the boys could maybe get up the if you had a bigger one possibly 28 pounds you know occasionally you might throw in a big one but that but um, then you're going to a mom that's been downsized a couple of generations too. So you say like Aggie. So Aggie's mom is Angel. So, um, and Noah's the dad, he's 18 pounds. And then we go to Aggie, she's downsized again. So that's, so that's like two generations down. So these have been downsized three times through the 18 pounders. Males, well, and easy about like 20 pounds. So I'm still gonna guess, you know, if I had, you know, if you, if you absolutely want to stay under 30 pounds, you know, just know that this litter is a little bigger. So you could go to, uh, if you want a little smaller, go to Liberty's litter now because Liberty, and Aggie have the same grandma. So Liberty and Aggie's parents are sisters. So you still have that great bloodline. If you want to move over to Liberty's litter, I'm thinking, uh, you know, there's more history there with Chewbacca that they're going to stay smaller, like the fifth, like a girl, 15 to, or 14, 
is Lila, her, Layla, her, her daughter, is 14 pounds. And they make it up to, you know, low 20s. This one's still down here by my feet. What a sweetie. And the rest are taking a nap. Okay, good night. Nap nap time.